Today we're here with Simon from Thompson Motorsport and we're going to be talking about some of the technical details on his Formula V. Now Simon runs his own YouTube channel over at Thompson Motorsport, um, I'll put a link in the description, and he's also planning on releasing the plans on how to build this car really soon. Now his channel goes through all the different processes of building it, so you should really check that out. Now the plan's are being released on the basis of a sort of Patreon support, so if it's something you're interested in, I'll also put the link for his Patreon profile in the description. So Simon, how did this project sort of come about? Well, I've been racing for a couple of years uh, in Formula Vs as well, and it kind of got to the stage where I, uh, you know, I wanted to be able to play with the car and do what I wanted with it. So I was deciding how I would go about transitioning from leasing to owning, uh, and I, you know, I looked at second-hand cars, you know, they, they cost about $20,000 or something like that. Uh, and I just started to think to myself whether I could buy the engine and gearbox and all other bits and actually build my own car for a similar price to what a second-hand car was. And then I would get exactly what I wanted. And having done Formula SE together, you know, uh, <laughs> hopefully I knew kind of what I was doing enough that I'd be able to actually build something. So uh, I started building a car maybe at the end of 2015. I'd just been playing around in SolidWorks with some designs in the evenings after work. Uh, so I had something to work from, and uh, yeah, after about a year and oh, just over a year, I had most of this together. Yeah, well, the, the time frame on this car is quite incredible that was built so far. So f for the viewers of mine that don't know, Simon and I actually went to university together, um, and we were on the Formula SAE team together, and I actually did, through JKF, uh, a lot of the bodywork and aero design optimization for this process. So I guess we should kind of start with the bodywork and aero design and all that sort of stuff. So the bodywork, uh, initially, uh, I have a general idea of aer aerodynamics, so I had uh, a few details. It didn't look too different to this, but initially it had, uh, say, the front was straight instead of the, the long curve that it's got now. It, um, it was straight and then it sort of curved out and went straight along the side of the car. So uh, after Carl got involved, uh, well, he changed it to this long, uh, nice curve, which I suppose you're better off talking about how it yeah, yeah. Well, it. Yeah, yeah. So basically what we did was we, we smoothened off this whole area here, removed a step that was kicking the airflow out that was causing big problems for us downstream. Now, the car, as you see it right now, doesn't have the full under tray on it, but we actually did a lot of work to try and get good airflow through the back and over the back end of the diffuser. Um, and that helps a lot with total performance of the under tray. There was also a lot of work on the under tray around the shielding off of the wheels. Um, but in terms of the general bodywork, the key points for the main sector were to get nice low drag through here um, by having everything nice and smooth. Um, minimal airflow opening, so just a little bit of air to go in through the top of the engine. We'll talk about the engine a little bit later. And then just optimizing it for that big under tray, which is not on the car right now. And there was actually, uh, I just remember this detail, the side pods for the car, when I first came to you, they were more like a Formula One side pod. So uh, there was this concept that you had of going with a, a side pod that would bleed the boundary layer off the surface of the car. So that was, uh, that was quite a big change from where it had been before. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, a lot of that was bringing it down to these slim side pods that basically, this doesn't need a huge amount of cooling air because it's not generating a whole lot of heat. So you can kind of back that off a little bit and drop your drag a lot. So the bodywork's held on by these Zeus fasteners. Um, they're not currently attached. They will be attached in due course. But we're talking all fiberglass construction for all this bodywork, which means it's not the most rigid bodywork, but it does the job and it's very cost effective. So let's talk suspension. What are you running up the front here? It's basically the suspension that you'd find on like an old Volkswagen Beetle, uh, like the old Type 1, uh, Herbie style thing. Uh, it's an H-beam up the front. The top uh, beam contains a, a torsion style suspension. So as it um, twists, that provides the springing. Uh, the bottom uh, contains an anti-roll bar that just connects the left to the right, and it's, it's surprisingly stiff, actually. Uh, then we run for damping. Uh, there's uh, bell cranks uh, put, going through push rods up into these uh, dampers on the top of the chassis. There's not much here that uh, couldn't be modified to run a typical A-arm suspension, but just for the rules, that's what we have to, that's what we have to run. Hmm. Uh, we've got a steering box, uh, sorry, a steering rack uh, running through tie rods to the uh, uprights. Uh, controlling the wheels so it's quite a typical car suspension really mm -hmm. yeah so let's move move along to the back because we're running quite a different setup at the back compared to what i'm normally used to yeah this is where things get really weird this setup is pretty much unique to uh, formula v 
uh, we we run this setup because of the constraints of the old Type 1 Volkswagen suspension. Uh, so the, basically what it is, is some axle tubes that run from the uh, center of the gearbox out to the wheel and are totally constrained to the uh, to the wheel itself. So as the wheel moves up, the the wheels just do that. They Their camber follows the, the yeah. bump. They basically pivot around this section here, right? Yeah, yeah. that's it. So what we've got then is some uh, trailing uh, leading arms which go to the rear of the gearbox and they just control the toe. Uh, we've got push rods which transfer the force up to the springs through a uh, bell crank. At the front, uh, up here, there's, there's a rocker and what that does is as, say, we go through a right-hand corner, the right-hand wheel will uh, try and move up, the left-hand wheel will try and move down, the front will pivot effectively providing no rear roll stiffness there will just be stiffness through the springs for bump so um yeah i guess the question i'd ask on that setup then is that the way that i would naturally have thought to do a zero roll setup would be to have a monoshock in the center yeah. and then have um the roll pivot around that um why is it that you've gone for two shocks here instead of just a monoshock well what you've described is pretty much the typical formula v suspension setup and it definitely is the, the simplest uh, the reason I've gone for what I've got here is because I can uh, do a bit of an upgrade on this to run a second set of springs that will provide only roll stiffness. So that gives me independent control of the, the, uh, the roll stiffness and the heave or bump, uh, which, which, you know, that allows me to tune the car much better. And particularly with the, the bizarre setup on the, on the front as well, <laughs> it's good to be able to separate those things and tune them independently. Uh, you'd also notice that on the rear, because of the very high uh, roll center at the rear, uh, but just because of the geometry of the way that the setup, suspension is set up, you end up with a huge jacking force when you're going through a corner. And so basically the rear tries to lift up. Uh, what we do in Formula V typically is just run a camber cable. And that's just a very simple way of preventing the uh, tires from drooping too far down, effectively lifting the rear up. So that controls the camber. Yeah, so it's basically just like a droop limiter for the two tyres, yeah, essentially. Correct, yeah. yeah. So just a final technical note, I guess we should talk about the engine. Uh, I understand these are based off a of Volkswagen Beetle engine, uh, but the regs are quite tight. Can you just give me a really quick run through of what they sort of are? Yeah, look, uh, it, it is basically a standard Volkswagen Type 1 engine and gearbox. So there, there isn't that much that separates it from a normal road car. There's a few things here and there you can do, uh, you can buy a couple of aftermarket parts, but they're all meant to be pretty much exactly the same as each other so that, uh, you know, the, the competition is able to be uh, as close as possible and so that it, ideally it doesn't cost the competitors too much. So yeah, really this is not too dissimilar to what you would find in a standard road car. So it's definitely a, uh, a cozy fit, <sighs> even for someone my size. Just to give you an idea of the view out. That's pretty, pretty cool. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to check out Simon's channel um, to see more on his car and don't forget to check out those plans too. Um, and don't forget to also check out my channel and my other videos and subscribe to those if you like them. Hopefully, see you next time.